Hi, this is uh, Gary Laws again from Jagged Edge Design. Um, we will be running the uh, parametric uh, object making with GDL course. That's from the 2nd of September. Um, I just wanted to run you through um, this, an, an, a quick overview of the sort of objects that we created here in our little practice, Jagged Edge Design. Um, if you didn't see the introduction, it's worth looking at it just to see um, the background behind this course and why we feel it's important to you. So here we go. These are these are some of the objects we create. This is a quick graphic showing a few of them. So pretty much everything here apart from that wall there is one of our GDL objects. So we've got three-dimensional tiles of, of various sorts, 3D chimney with different capping finishes and the ability to have place pots on it, stainless steel flues with terminals. They can be attached directly to boilers and things like that. Um, as a mesh tool, which is which is very flexible, can can be many many things. Um, the windows are all our own windows that represent um, the local vernacular. Obviously, the sort of thing you get in in an off-the-shelf international product doesn't necessarily suit your your local style. So these are very parametric objects that can represent many, you know, many different windows within one single window object. Um, things different different structural elements. Um, this is a an engineered floor joists, these are standard floor joists, herringbone strutting built in. Um, these are preformed steel lintels for masonry walls with um, external finishes built into them, so whether it's a brick course or what have you. Um, timber cladding in various options, all parametrically driven. This is a, a an oak post with a staddle stone, very much um, part of the historic building culture here in the UK. Um, something we need often, so that's a parametrically driven object that, that delivers that for us. This is an oil tank, um, you might see that in a little bit. This oil tank is also a very similar object to a to an underground uh, rainwater harvesting tank, so you know that, that object f formed the next and so on. Um, staircase objects, we've you know we've got three staircase objects that cover probably 99% of all staircases you're ever likely to draw so um, very very useful object. Um, guttering object here which is gutter and downpipe built in I'll show you that one in a second. You can't quite see it here but there's a dental detail running along that roof again parametric dental and over here I've got a fascia board and soffit which includes corbels and end treatments and so on. So almost everything in that image is a GDL object we've created um, there are some 600 of them in our in our library our lab, library altogether. But that just gives you a bit of a flavour of the sort of things um, that we make make, and we will be making uh, or giving you the basis of how you can do that sort of thing for yourself within this training course. Um, let's take that out of the way. I'm going to give you an example on a on a live project. So um, let me just go to the ground floor plan of this one. Um, this is a this is an old pub. Um, you know, I'm in the UK. We're in a rural area. We have a lot of old historic buildings. Um, in fact, it's a, a particularly old pub. This one. It's older than most. Uh, let me just pull up some images. Uh, this is it in 2005, but it goes back a, a lot further than that. It was actually built um, in 1490, 91, somewhere around there. So the old building, which uh, I think extends from there up to here. So I think this was the original building. Um, the chimney was a later addition, and I think this wing was a later addition. Obviously, this was. This no longer exists. A few things have changed since then. Um, so this is 2005. Uh, the oldest photograph we have of the building is uh, 1901. So this is it as a pub in 1901. You notice it has a, a stone roof here. It now has a concrete plain tile roof at this point. Um, it's quite fortunate it was replaced uh, because the roof is is quietly collapsing at the moment um, and the weight of a stone roof would have accelerated that. Um, but a lovely old building, you can see it, 1901 it was a pub at that time, there's the brewer's uh, label on the side. Um, you'll see some features that are common, um, so the Victorian bay window that was added here in the late uh, 1800s is here. Um, porches have been replaced and things like that, but that's you know, not uncommon to the sort of work we do here. So these sorts of buildings are a bit of a challenge to a, to a very um, specific product, such as a, a CAD or BIM product. Not always easy to do these organic shapes or difficult shapes. Anyway, that's the building, and, and here it is in Archicad. Um, I'll just sit to 3D a minute so as you can see that 
that um, most of it's there. Let's switch all our layers on. And uh, whoa. Um, and you can see there's our there's our building. Um, no textures applied here. I don't tend to use textures in ArchiCAD. We use external renderers for that sort of thing. Um, but that's a, a, a typical old project for us. Now, objects that we've got in here, we're talking in the introduction about how important it is to be able to take an existing ArchiCAD um, GDL object and tweak it to do the sorts of things you want it to do. Many of them are quite limited. Uh, and don't have the range of capability that you would hope for in, in a parametric object. And a, and a good example of that is, is the, the ridge tile. And we've modified this one. Um, actually, it's, it's quite a good object for an ArchiCAD object. It's, it's quite capable, but we've just enhanced its performance. So as a ridge tile, um, most of the time it will be a horizontal ridge. So if you choose that option, so we just put a choice list in here. Um, it could be a dynamically placed object, and that's how it starts off in ArchiCAD. Um, and we've added an automatic hip option here. And with this, all we do is we enter um, the roof pitch of these, and it calculates what angle that will be. So that just saves you time. So this is just putting a little interface on, a, on an existing ArchiCAD object to make it quicker. Actually, we have completely rewritten this object. There's very little of the original. I don't think there's anything of the original left. Um, because there were other reasons we wanted to get more out of it. Um, but uh, that's an example of how you could take what was a, an original ARCHICAD object and make it a little bit better for yourself. Um, other objects in here that we've created, this is a, a guttering um, object. Let's just get in a bit closer so we can pick it up. Um, this object gets used an enormous amount. Um, it's a run of guttering and a downpipe, simple as that. You know, almost every building needs it. And again, as a parametric object, we can control here what diameter the gutter is, um, whether or not it needs a gutter. It could just be a downpipe if you want it. Um, and vice versa, it could just be a gutter with no downpipe. Um, if it's got a downpipe, is it a swan neck or is it a straight length of downpipe and so on. So it's just a simple parametric object, but very, very useful. We use it time and time again. Notice a little bit of cheating here. I've run the gutter straight in through this roof. I might just change that after I've done this because uh, not happy with that. Um, a few other options, whether or not we label it on the floor plan, and if we label it, how is the text aligned and rotated and so on. So if we look at that in 2D, let's go down to the, to the floor plan. Um, there's the downpipe, quite clear. There's the label. Um, the label can be moved and repositioned to suit where you want it on the drawing. And you notice all we're seeing here in the floor plan is the downpipe. If I move up to its to its source story, which is actually the roof story, um, there's more to it. There is the gutter, which is now 200 mil, because I've just changed it. Um, there's the, the outlet, there's the offset, and there's the downpipe, because that's what I want to see on that layer, but on that story, sorry. But on each story, it displays just what I want to see on each story. So that's the sort of thing you can do with a GDL object. Just make it a bit more usable for you. This was something we were discussing in the introduction, is making things um, work for you um, and the way in which you like to operate. Um, another object I've got here, if I just pick up this one, look at that in 3D. This is an oak beam. Well, it doesn't have to be oak, it could be any, any material, but in this instance it's an oak beam. But it's an oak beam with a stop chamfer. If I uh, get in a little bit closer, you might just see that. In fact, the easiest way is to select the object and you'll see the form of it. So it's got a stop chamfer on the beam. Very common detail in historic buildings, um, not only with beams, but also with window surrounds and things like that. So we just made a beam object. But again, very similar to the drainage object that I showed you previously in the introduction, um, we have controlled the interface so that it makes it very quick to enter the information. So if we're serving a historic building, um, it would be a survey. If it's a proposed beam, if it's a new beam we're putting in, some of the parameters will be different. So we would be controlling um, elements such as uh, what material it's made of and things like that. With a survey beam, it will be in our matte grey cross-section, which is what we always use for survey building. Here we enter the, the width of the beam, 
the height to the underside of the beam and the ceiling height. So that's information that would be collected during the survey and so that's just put into the object and it places it in the correct position. So making it very quick to use. Um, let's say typical one of our objects. There's, there's hundreds of that sort of thing. Um, over here we've got another rainwater pipe but this one's slightly different. I've opened that one up in 3D. Um, this one's attached to a fascia and soffit arrangement. So not much of an overhang on this one, but you can see there's a small soffit and a fascia with a return end on it, which has been trimmed to the roof. So the gutter is actually exactly the same gutter as I showed you before, but it's called in by this object. So as you're placing this object, it brings the guttering in and attaches it. So you get fascia, soffit, end treatment, whatever that may be. And there's a whole series of different parametric options, whether it's a brick corbel or a stone corbel or just a fascia return. Um, and you get the gutter and you get the downpipe in one object that's just placed in two clicks. So objects like that can be very, very um, fast to use. So that's, again, an example of the sort of thing we do. Um, all our windows and doors are bespoke to us. Um, most of the graphics, Graphsoft ones are fairly limited. Um, another one that we use quite a lot, which I think I've got here. Um, yeah, that's a that's an opening. So internal opening in a wall. Um, you can use the Graphisoft empty open function, but again, it's fairly limited. If I'm working on an existing building such as this, and I want to put a new opening into an existing wall, what I would like to see is some hatching there and there to indicate that we've cut an opening through the wall. So all we do is we have an option here for hatching. Do we want it on both sides, left or right? And put a label on it and say form opening. And that's exactly what I would want to see if I was forming an opening in an existing wall. So that's the sort of thing we do. Very simple object. Um, actually, it's not that simple. Um, it has a few other options as to how this, the opening should be formed. Is it a square opening, an arched opening, a three radius arch, or a two radius filleted arch? So um, it's a bit more sophisticated than, than just an opening, but takes the, the basic opening tool of Archicad and takes it a lot further. Because we do a lot of renovation work, there is a lot of that sort of thing in our library. So for example, if we were blocking up an existing doorway, let's say we're blocking up this one. So that's the, the same opening tool I showed you earlier. Uh, if we open it up, we have an option to block that. So if I pick up this one, um, I can say block opening. Uh, is it a partial fill? No, it's a solid fill. So if I wanted to partially fill the wall, I can give a thickness to it there. Um, blah, 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 a few other parameters, say OK, uh, just needs to be rotated for the text. And there we have now a blocked opening shown hatched um, with the text in there. I may want to put a bit of fill on the back of that. I should have done that really. And there we have it. So something that would normally take a number of tools to do in Archicad is covered in just one quick object. Um, and of course the beauty there is we're picking up the parameters of the existing opening so we don't have to sit and mess around with it. So that's um, the sort of thing we do um, with existing buildings. I'm just looking around for something else here that might be inspiring. I haven't got a staircase for this project because you wouldn't believe what this staircase does. It goes in all sorts of shapes so it's one of the few occasions there's something that doesn't quite fit our, our standard library. Um, what I will do is open up a project which has got a lot more um, of our objects in, which is a new project. So with the survey building, there's probably not quite so many. Um, doors, we've created our own because we have um, doors that have sloping angles on the top and things like that for doors that fit under staircases. So a little bit more sophisticated than the uh, the Graphisoft ones. Um, this is a new project, so total new build, so a lot more stuff in it. And this is a finished project. The last one was a survey drawing, so again, not so much in it. Uh, this is the ground floor plan for the construction drawings. So within this, I'll try and talk you through. We've got 
uh, this is out in the sticks uh, in the countryside so we've got a, a sewage treatment plant here um, with a with a soak away so inspection chambers coming in so very similar to the inspection chamber I showed during the introduction uh, this except this is a new one we pick up a few of those bits and pieces so that's a drainage run drainage run inspection chamber drainage run drainage run um, so it's treatment plant open up those in 3d you'll see they're all working they're all joining together so when I'm laying out a drainage plan we've got hot spots on our various bits and pieces so that we can pick up an object um, if I just grab that one I just need to see how it's defined yep okay and I can say actually let's change the angle of that one and it will drag it up or down accordingly and if I take it back down to that snap point it snaps to that inspection chamber the inspection chamber height can be changed dynamically to suit the drainage so when you're actually laying out the drainage you put your falls in and it does most of the work for you um, if you're working to a fixed fall so let's take this one I, I checked this before I did the dynamic change because if I didn't I wouldn't have been able to do it I can set it to a defined fall and just give it the fall there and it will lay it to my prefixed fall um, in addition to that something that we we do with with some of our, our objects um, with a drainage pipe that pipe can be used for many different services so it could be a foul drain it could be a surface water drain it could be a soil stack system it could be a waste system um, of various sizes or it could be something completely different now what this does if we choose one of these it changes all the parameters to suit our office standards so that the pen colors the render materials the description and everything else is all those parameters are updated with just one click makes it very very powerful very quick to use you'll see how everything changes there 32 mil waste um, and back to a foul drain and so on so everything is is covered um, very quickly uh, that's a that's a very nice feature so again an object that we created uh, that one was actually created I think a long time ago that was before we started this business so that's that one goes back a long long way uh, what else have we got here um, okay let's just pull in some other drawings so if we do an electrical layout um, oh, I've got a few objects missing because I've just loaded a new library here for this one which uh, it's obviously not too happy with but all our electrical symbols um, we've created ourselves very straightforward they to create the 2d symbol we want to see in 2d and they label themselves and so on so you know nice smart little objects uh, if we do uh, let's do a heating layout so again um, this is under floor heating on this project so we've got an under floor heating loop it's a 2d only object this one if I open it up you'll see that we can parametrically control the centers of it um, that's the manufacturers name that's the system type that we're using so it's a wet system here um, and it calculates the total length of that loop and from that we can calculate the energy requirement for that heating system which is all added in to our to our energy uh, calculator that we that we use as part of the schedule um, which also includes radiators and other heating sources we can calculate the loads we can calculate the heat output from it which of course varies slightly depending on the centers of the pipes and so on so even though it's just a simple 2d only symbol because we we never need this in 3d so there's no point um, it still delivers an awful lot for us um, these are uh, these are smoke sensors and fire sensors and again um, part of an integrated system so they're just simple objects that we've created for that um, what else uh, lighting just the same as before uh, window schedules you don't you know the sort of thing that goes on with that um, let's do a groundworks I think we've covered most of it already but again even with incoming services so this is uh, incoming water incoming oil because we've got um, an oil system here because we're out in the sticks and um, the oil tank is an object that we've created so if we just open that one up um, it's a 3d object that is an oil tank um, interestingly the groundwater harvesting so this is a surface water harvesting tank looks very very similar because it is very similar it just has an access chamber on the top so once you've created one of these sorts of objects there are many other 
similar. It's all parametrically driven, so if you choose a particular manufacturer's tank, it builds it to the correct size and the such like. Um, this is just a soak away here. So this is a two cubic meter soak away running off the rainwater harvesting tank, so there's an overflow. But even that is a parametric object. So something as simple as that, that could just be a set of four lines, we get so much more out of it being an object. Now that object is effectively very similar to our inspection chamber object that we showed in the introduction, and it was based on it. So once you've got one of those objects, it takes two minutes to make something like this. And that two minutes of time will give you something that can be scheduled, can be quantified, and once again, I haven't got a nice user interface on this, but I can choose what sort of soak away it is, whether it's an off-the-shelf one, so this will give me, um, if we look at that in 2D, it will automatically bring in a manufacturer-specific one, so we've got you know, a bit of smartness, and it helps to inform the design process, because as I'm placing this, if I want to use a manufacturer-specific one, I just choose who the manufacturer is, um, and the options, and I'm not having to look it up on the internet or through manufacturers' catalogues and, uh, and the such like. So greatly speeds up the design process when it comes to making design decisions. Oh, talking too fast. Uh, what else have we got here? Well, let's move on up through the model a little bit. We've got a floor joist layout here. So again, this is an object I'm particularly fond of. This is um, a reasonable investment in time in producing this one, um, floor joists. It auto labels, so that's the label for that one. 220 by 65 mil treated softwood floor joists at 450 mil centers on proprietary built in joist hangers. That's the description on my drawing. So if I just select the floor joists, let me show you them in 3D to start with. So they're very simple. It's just, wee, what sort of view is that? Okay, um, very, very straightforward sticks of timber with herringbone strutting at whatever centers. Um, if I go into the dialog box for it, let me just stop spinning, select object, and open the dialog box, um, you'll see a few interesting things here. First thing is um, it could be a single joist. Or a full floor. So the full floor means I, I lay them out as an array, which makes it much quicker to place. And we use the single joist if we've got to double up anywhere or put some trimmers in or, or, or something of that ilk. Um, the sizing of the timbers. These are all sized to British standard timber sizes. So this is the sort of constraint you can put into an object. Again, makes it a lot easier for those people that are designing. So now I've only got the BS sizes of width and the BS sizes of depth. Um, obviously, this is local to us. You can put your own sizes in. If I switch that off, I can make it whatever width and depth I like. It saves time. It doesn't take long to do. One of those things that is very precious to us. It, it really does make a big difference to the way we work. Centers of the choice. Again, make it a choice list. Rather than having to type it in every time and remember uh, standard settings, you just change that. And again, by switching off this one, you can change that to whatever you like. Um, it calculates the loading for us. So we're using span tables that come from the uh, building research establishment to calculate what spans these will give us based on the load characteristics we're using. This one is now telling us that it's overspanned. So if I beef up the timbers, it's now fine. Again, this is fantastic to use. It saves us an enormous amount of time. What would I have to refer to otherwise? Obviously, the structural engineer will often give us this, but at the design stage, when we're wanting to quickly lay out a building, quickly allow for zonal spaces for, for, um, for the structure, to be very quickly able to assess what size timbers we'll be needing here saves us an awful lot of time. Um, with these objects, we can also um, switch on the floor and switch on the ceiling. And if we look at that in 3D, there they are showing them. We've got parametric control over those. Again, there's a lot more information on this object sat if we go to all parameters, and you'll see there's an awful lot of data in here. And this now starts to look like a Graphisoft object where you wade through millions and millions of parameters and it takes you all day just to place one object. That's no good. What we've taken is the key parameters that we're going to use all the time, put them on a single page, ideally, of the user interface, and that's all you want there. If we do need to change anything else, which rarely happens,
we just go to that one. So again, it's a great way of speeding up the drafting process. Um, similar to the floor joist, we've got a, a choice of, of different flooring elements. So that's an eco joist. If I just take off the floor and ceiling, uh, you can see eco joist. We've got an I-beam uh, type uh, eco joist as well, so it's a, a, a sorry, engineered floor joist works in exactly the same way as the ones I've shown you. So it could be a single element, it could be a full floor. The sizes are to manufacture specific sizes. So if we choose the manufacturer, which I've got in my parameters up there, um, it puts them in and so on. And again, as I said before, this informs the design process. I think I've changed, well, I'll change the size anyway just to prove the point. So we're now up to 75 by. 2 to 5 and we go back to the floor plan and you'll see the label has updated. Not only will the label have updated but obviously all my schedules will have updated and because it's a GDL object it can count how many I've used and what length they are. So when we're creating schedules we've got a great deal of information that's coming out of this model. Um, even little things like the lateral restraints, their GDL objects, it's just a, you know, it's, it's a very very simple object but it's quicker and easier to do it as a GDL object. Once you've made yourself one object, it's very easy to make something like that, put a bit of smartness into it so that it, it labels itself automatically, and, uh, and there you go. Um, just to give you a flavor, let's just chop through this building a minute and see what we get. Um, so this should... Okay, we've got a few elements switched on there. Let's just switch off the floors. Um, yeah, okay. So that's our, uh, that's our timber structure for this building. It's a very much a conventional um, masonry structure and, uh, and timber frame for the structural elements. A few other objects in here that are, um, that are ours. There's a, a soil stack over here. Um, so a soil and vent pipe going out up through the roof. Um, you may recognize that. It's very similar to the rainwater pipe that you saw on the guttering a few minutes ago. It's the same object. So that object is being called by the, by the guttering in order to make a, uh, a downpipe, but it's a soil stack if, we are, um, if we're just putting a soil stack in. So you can see, again, we have la automatic labeling. So, uh, sorry, that's not the automatic labeling. There's the automatic labeling. So is it a soil and vent pipe, a stub stack? Um, a DVP, a VP, an RWP, a flue, because it be, can be used as a flue, a vent pipe or something else. Uh, we can control how it will appear on different stories. So is it the lower pipe and offset or the upper pipe and offset or just the lower pipe or the upper pipe? So on each story above and below, we can display it in different ways. Again, it makes our drawings work. Um, similarly, this is a flue pipe. So this is the stainless steel flue we showed you earlier in the, in the rendering. Um, parametrically driven, we control again all the all the same things. In fact again it comes from the same object. It's it's a variation of that one which is also a variation of the rainwater pipe. So again once you've drawn one um, the rest come with it. Uh, some attic trusses again parametrically driven same sort of deal as before. Um, this is a manufacturer specific object so this is an unvented storage tank. Um, when we label it, uh, we can choose uh, what it is, who makes it. Uh, I haven't got the information there. Where is it? It's there. Okay, so who the manufacturer is, model number, and so on, and it will label it. Um, it then gives us choice lists as to um, which model number it is. This one hasn't got a fancy user interface. I haven't done that yet. Um, and we it then calculates loadings and, and the such like. So again, typical of, uh, of one of our little objects. So hopefully that gives you a flavor of the sort of things that we put into our buildings. Um, again, like I say, we've got 600 odd on objects in all. And as you can see from what I've got just gone through that, many of them are based on others. So once you, once you build a, a base element, it can be many other things with a little bit of tweaking. And that's very much what we're gonna show in the training course that starts on the 2nd of September, we're going to be building those those base elements. We'll finish up with a job with, with an object or two that you'll be able to use, um, but those objects will form other elements or, or form the basis of other elements that you can go away and develop in your own time. I hope you find it really useful. Thank you very much for listening.